last several years, the United States has, has, has put money and, and made a substantial effort into trying to develop uh, energy from, uh, from agriculture crops. Like, uh, like you see here, this is a switchgrass crop. And uh, we've got this particular study set up to see whether or not we can incorporate this into a into a, a livestock grazing system that would be that would be a uh, common practice here in this part of the, the southern plains. This particular study, what we're trying to understand is whether or not that we can we can put uh, stalker cattle in this system after they've been grazing a wheat system for the for the bulk of the the cool season months during sort of November from say May and then and then we transfer those cattle over into this switchgrass crop and get the, the extra pounds from this switchgrass and take those animals to market and get a few more dollars for them and then at the end of the at the end of the of the year, say December, after these plants go into senescence, we can come back and harvest it for a, a bioenergy feedstock crop. And so we're, we're trying to ascertain whether or not that'll be, uh, one, biologically possible, and two, if it's economical for farmers to consider that. So I'm here today with uh, Dr. James Rogers uh, with the Samuel Roberts Noble Foundation. James runs our uh, forage science research program in the Ag Division. And uh, James, can you give the audience a little, a little insight about what we're doing here specifically? with this research project on, on switchgrass? Well, I think as John mentioned earlier, what we want to do is kind of look at the effect of switchgrass grazing early in the season on animal performance, then pull these cattle off and, and see what effect the grazing is going to have on biofuel accumulation at the end of the harvest season, or at the very end of the season. The other thing that we're looking at with this experiment is what is the effect of rest versus no rest on animal performance and switchgrass persistence. So we have these paddocks set up into uh, several different treatments, either a continuous grazing treatment, a seven day rest period, a 14 day rest period, or a 28 day rest period for the uh, switchgrass before we would come back and graze it again. And we're looking at the effect of that on the persistence of the switchgrass and also the animal performance. And then the switchgrass is, is so productive. You can see early in the season here how much forage mass that we have here in June. These cattle have been out here on this on this switchgrass uh, since the 1st of May. I believe we turned out about May 7th is, is our turnout date for this year. So these cattle have been out here about 40 days. And you can see where they're, they're grazing the tops of the switchgrass. They're, they're taking the leaves off, but there's still a lot of biomass out here. Uh, this experiment, we have it set up where it's going to run for a, a time period of 70 days and then we pull these cattle. So for this year, that's going to put us about mid-July when we're going to be pulling these cattle off. And at that point, the switchgrass is, is going to be fairly mature and our quality is probably really going to be taking a fairly steep decline. That's probably as far as we're, we feel that we can take uh, these type of cattle that are still growing and get a reasonable average daily gain on these cattle. Okay. The cattle that we're using in this study are Angus based, they're black hided cattle. Uh, we wanted cattle that were coming off of wheat pasture, so we were looking at cattle that are probably in that feeder weight range, probably about a seven, seven and a half weight calf. So the idea with that would be these cattle would come off of, of winter pasture graze out and then move right into switchgrass. So we would have a, a, an extension of the, uh, of the grazing season moving from winter pasture to switchgrass. We'd be able to add additional weight gain, hopefully cheaply, uh, with the use of the switchgrass. What kind of, what kind of refinery process are, are, are we talking about? Is this, is this packaged up and, and sent off to another place in the country or? Right now, there, there really is not a local market for biomass for us here in southern Oklahoma. Uh, probably the closest facility to us would be in um, southern Kansas. Uh, okay. In terms of packaging, um, 
we've been using a round baler and just been producing round bales uh, with this and collecting the biomass through that, that process. Uh, most of the refineries like square bales, the large square bale packages, because they're easier to transport on a truck. You can get more more uh, pounds per load than you can with a, with a round bale. Um, that market is, is still to develop. In some areas of the country, they're using this to co-fire um, steam plants to generate electricity with coal. Uh, and we're, the, the, the ethanol industry is still somewhat of a, a developing industry. So in terms of the product used for this at the end of the season, it's, it's fairly limited at this point. Okay. That this, that this research has been funded by the United States Department of Agriculture and they have a, a, a joint project with the Department of Energy and it's a it's a biomass research development initiative and so the Noble Foundation collaborated with Oklahoma State University and uh, and, and so we have a team of engineers we have uh, we have forage scientists like James we have animal scientists we have economists like myself, and uh, we're, we're trying to, to develop best management practices for how to grow, um, how to establish, how to manage, how to harvest uh, switchgrass for a bioenergy crop. And part of the reasoning behind this specific project is that this part of the world in Oklahoma is pre predominantly, from an agriculture standpoint, is uh, wheat and cattle country and so uh, the, the idea is that if you want to get producers to adopt this type of production practice that somehow it needs to be able to fit in with a current either a wheat or a livestock program I see that too what what do you think what do you think is driving that well I think the cattle on this particular rotation they're staying here just long enough that they're coming back and they're grazing the same plants probably twice or more before they move on to the next pattern. Looks like they're hitting some of it pretty hard though. Look down here. I mean, this looks like this has been hit real hard. It has been hit hard. Very and there's hard. still some good leaf. Mm -hmm. And there's still some good forage out here. If you had to guess, how much forage would you say is still out here right now? So we're what, uh, are we Are we 30 days into this, 70 days? May, June, we're, so we're 30 days into this roughly, we're about, right? We're about halfway through this study and, and it's looks to me like there's probably about uh, 5,000 pounds of dry matter or more out here. Okay. And one of, one, of the, one of the goals is persistence this, in this perennial energy crop, if you will, right? I mean, we're going right. to try to, I mean, you're going to establish this once and hope it's going to last for, for many, many years. So. Right, exactly. So, so we want to see whether a continuous or some type of a rotational system, what's, what's the benefit to long-term switchgrass persistence. Um, and, and switchgrass, just as you, as you kind of see it here, it, it, it's a different kind of uh, a forage plant. It's a very strong bunch plant. So you see clumps or bunches of plants making up the total, the total sward out here. So there's a good bit of space in between these plants. Um, it doesn't really affect cattle grazing. They're going to come up and strip the leaves off these plants, but it does kind of make for a, a rough pasture to move across, which is something for a producer if he's considering having switchgrass. It does make it a, a bit difficult uh, in these in these type of pastures to come across with hay equipment. It's going to be a bit of a bumpy ride. And how long have we been doing this, and what, what are you finding? Well, this is the uh, this is the third year of the study, I believe. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> The first two years, really, we're not getting any treatment separation uh, for the first two years of this study. So that means that really the simplest system for a producer is probably the best. And that simplest system for us right now is, is the continuous grazing system. Okay. Uh, we're not really finding any benefit to a, a rotational system in terms of animal performance uh, or biomass yield at the end of the season.